Hello everyone, my name is Parantapa Bhattacharjo. I am a postdoctoral researcher in the Network System Science and Advanced Computing Group at the Biocomplexity Institute and Initiative of University of Virginia. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to speak here today and I have to apologize for not being there in person. Due to a last minute personal emergency, I had to change my plans. I have to also apologize for some traffic noise that you are going to have to endure in this video. My house is right next to a popular road and sees a lot of traffic. So today I'm going to talk about a work in progress project that we are working on that is called Bayesian Decision Flow Diagrams. I'm going to begin with a summary of this talk first. One of the focus areas of our research group is understanding social phenomena and human behavior in large groups. One of the ways in which our group does this is in constructing agent-based simulations and analyzing how this simulation behaves and how close to real data it comes. In this regard, I have had the privilege of working with cognitive psychologists, sociologists, and economists when building these simulations. We came up with Bayesian decision flow diagrams as a graphical method for describing complex agent-based simulation models, mainly because we wanted to combine the benefits of learning from data using machine learning with the domain expert knowledge that we had access to. The action space of what an agent does in an agent-based model can be really large. For example, let's say one is modeling a social media platform like Twitter. A natural way to do this would be to consider people as agents. These agents take actions and one natural way to model this would be to consider tweets as actions. Now modeling what a Twitter user decides to do and constructs a tweet involves a lot of decisions. And what BDFD provides is a systematic way for decomposing this into smaller decisions. What BDFD provides is a framework for combining modeling prowess of Bayesian networks and the expressiveness and simplicity of flowcharts or flow diagrams. In doing so, it can utilize both domain expert knowledge for overall systems modeling and learning individual decision models using state-of-the-art deep neural networks. A particularly important feature of BDFD models is that, since it inherits from Bayesian networks, it can be used to express causal assumptions and thus facilitates explainability and answering of counterfactual queries. As I said, our group works a lot on system simulations, such as epidemic simulations and social simulations. One of the key motivations to run simulations is to answer two classes of questions. The first are why questions or questions regarding explainability. Why did a specific YouTube video get viral? The second class are what-if questions, also known as counterfactual questions. How many people will get sick if 10% of Bangalore got infected by a specific infectious strain of flu? Explainability and counterfactual questions are special in that they are causal questions. And everyone who has dabbled in statistics has by now memorized correlation is not causation. What this means is that no matter how much data you collect and how complex your pattern mining algorithm is, from the association's mind, from the observational data alone, you wouldn't be able to answer the above questions. This is the primary thesis of a recent book called The Book of Why by Judea Pearl. Statistics answer to causality is randomized controlled trials. But if you want to answer the question, what will happen if 10% of Bangalore got infected by flu, and you want to run randomized trials, we hope you will face some ethical difficulties and some definite legal ones. In these cases, there exists a less popular alternative that is causal models. What a causal model does is make explicit a set of causal assumptions that can then be used to explain given observations and answer what-if questions. It is important to note that causal interactions are assumed and not inferred from data. Next, we discuss how a BDFD model does this. To understand BDFD, let's take a concrete example. Let's consider that we are trying to model a subpopulation of Twitter users. Agents in this system are Twitter users themselves. Let's further assume we are making a discrete time simulation. At every time step, every Twitter user in this model creates zero or more tweets and has the following choices for doing so. He or she can make a new tweet, he or she can respond to an existing tweet. When responding to an existing tweet, there are three options. He or she can retweet the existing tweet, 
he or she can reply to the existing tweet, he or she can quote the existing tweet. All options other than retweeting would require creation of content. Output of a run of the simulation is an ordered sequence of tweets. This diagram is a flowchart representing of a PDFD model that we call Niobe. It is intended for the scenario that we just described. All BDFD models have two representations, the flowchart version and an equivalent Bayesian network version. This is the flowchart version of the model. I find the flowchart version to be more intuitive and more easy to describe. The execution of this model starts when a Twitter user in the system has decided to produce a tweet. The execution starts here at the left. The first decision to be taken is whether to respond to an existing tweet or make a new tweet. Every decision in a BDFD model is made on basis of a context. For example, for this decision, the context of the model is the Twitter user's ID, some integer ID that is assigned by Twitter, the simulated timestamp, let's say December 28, 2018, 2 p.m., and all the tweets that have been made before now. In practice, all of this gets translated into a bunch of features that is put through some classifier. For example, simulated timestamp might be converted to time of day and day of the week. The Twitter user's ID might be used to retrieve the user's average activity level during this hour of the day. And all the tweets that have been posted previously might be used to compute how active Twitter has been in the last hour. These features can be handcrafted. For example, we have economists in our group who are working on cost-benefit models for this decision and they tell us what features to use. They can also be auto-generated. For example, we have computed user-level embeddings that gets passed in as user features. Either way, the classifier takes in the features and outputs a probability for the model taking one part or the other. The model then stochastically chooses a branch based on these probabilities. Let's say the model decides to take the existing path. The next decision in line is to decide how the user discovered the tweet that he or she decided to respond to. Did the user find the tweet because someone mentioned the user in it? Or did it appear on the user's timeline? As, be as before, features for this decision are derived from the decision's context and are used to generate probabilities for making this decision. The next decision is line is to select the tweet that is actually being responded to. For this decision, the source selected in the previous decision gets add, added to the context for making this one. This decision is slightly different than the previous ones in that number of possible outcomes is variable, since the number of tweets available to respond to are variable. Thus, the different kind of classifier is necessary, something that supports variable number of output labels. Now, once the parent tweet has been chosen, the next task is to choose the response type. For this decision, the parent tweet ID chosen in the previous test gets appended to the context. Let's assume, for example, the model decides to reply to the tweet. The next step is to decide who to mention and what keywords to include in the tweet. Once all of these decisions have been made, the new tweet can now be produced. As can be seen, the path taken can differ based on the decisions and the different kinds of tweets that will be produced. Simulating using BDFD model involves generating tweets on behalf of a given set of users for a given number of time steps. As is obvious, the BDFD model is a generated model. Note that this is just one model, but it embeds and makes explicit an ordering of decisions which embody the causal assumptions made by the model. As with any causal models, these assumptions can be up for discussion and one can lead to the development of a different model. I put in this slide for the sake of completeness. This is showing the BaseNet version of the flowchart model that we just saw. BDFD is a simple and versatile approach for building models. Here we see a BDFD model for the social curation website Reddit that we call Persephone. It operates very similarly to the Twitter BDFD model Niobe I described earlier. However, due to structural differences in the platforms and the way content is organized, decisions are different. We are also working on a similar model for the social coding platform GitHub. 
The procedure for learning from data in a BDFD setup is different based on whether the same event, as in case of Niobe, a tweet, can be produced by the system using different sequence of decisions. For example, a given tweet can mention a user and can also be present in the user's timeline. If in real data the user selects this tweet to respond to, the hidden variable source of the tweet can have multiple possibilities that might must be taken care of. The learning procedure in general consists of two steps, that we call the training data generation step and the individual model training step. During the training data generation step, for a given tweet in the real data, the algorithm tries to find paths that the model would have taken to generate the given tweet, along with the likelihoods of, those, of taking those paths. In case multiple paths are possible, the algorithm chooses one in proportion to the computed likelihood of taking the path. For every decision node in the path, the model computes the features relevant for the decision node along with the real chosen outcome. The features and the real chosen outcome are appended to the decision node's training dataset. Once the whole corpus has been processed and training data for all decision nodes have been generated, the individual model training step is then started, and the individual nodes' models are trained independently based on the classifier type used for the node. The training data generation step and the individual model training step are iterated repeatedly until conversion. However, in practice, repeatedly doing these steps is very computation intensive. Thus, as an approximation till now, we have tweaked the model such that only one path exists for a given tweet to be produced. In case of the given example, if a given tweet mentioning the user is also present in his or her timeline, we assume he or she will be made aware of it via mentions first. For this presentation, I had tried to skip most implementation details and focus primarily on the concept of BDFD simulation and learning procedure. But in practice, a number of issues arise when trying to learn and simulate using BDFD models at scale. When we started working on the Niobe model, we had a goal in mind, simulating multiple millions of users for multiple weeks and learning from hundreds of millions of tweets. Using the approximations and workarounds I am about to describe, we were able to learn from a corpus of over 600 million tweets and simulate activity of over 7 million Twitter users for a period of 2 weeks in less than 6 hours. But doing so required using distributed computing infrastructure. However, using distributed computation infrastructure was a challenge because the Twitter model as described uses in its context all tweets that have been previously generated. This dependency makes the simulation procedure essentially sequential. We work around this problem by controlling for the time granularity of the simulation and making an assumption that the agents in the system become aware of events generated by other events only at the end of the simulation step. In other words, agents can compute their actions independently within a given time step. This assumption enables us to train model fidelity for parallelism and allows us to split the computation using a bulk synchronous parallel design which in turn allows us to run the BDFD models for individual users in parallel and to distribute the computation across clusters. However, this still requires some orchestration and synchronization as the events or tweets produced need to be made available to all agents running on all the systems in the subsequent time steps. For this purpose, we have also created an ABM modeling framework for distributing this computation task that we call the matrix. I would be happy to talk about this over email or share preprints of the matrix platform paper which discusses the implementation issues for these kinds of and other time-driven simulation models. In summary, Bayesian decision flow diagrams are a graphical method for describing complex agent-based models and their utility lies in being able to combine domain expert knowledge from for system modeling as well as learning from in learning individual decision models from data. BDFDs, however, are still a work in progress. Although we are already using it practically for delivering projects, 
we are still working on developing a more coherent formal theory behind it to understand its abilities and limitations. I would like to take the next five minutes of my talk to discuss some other theoretical work that is being done in our research group. Several researchers in our group have been working on inference problem for discrete dynamical systems of which BDFD models are definitely a subclass. In particular, the focus of this work has been on graph dynamical systems, which serves as a useful formal model for many problems in several disciplines, including social science and systems biology. I'm going to give, quickly give an overview of graph dynamical systems or GDS. GDS is a formal model for understanding and developing agent-based models. In GDS, nodes represent agents and edges represent permissible local interactions among agents. For this talk, we will assume that the underlying graph is undirected. Every node or agent has a state at every time step in the GDS, and the local function at the node determines the next state. For this talk, we shall assume that all nodes compute their local functions and update their states in parallel. This is known as a synchronous update model. This slide shows a simple example to illustrate the time evolution of a synchronous GDS. In this system, we have four nodes and each local function is the boolean R. Initially, at time t equals 0, node A is in state 1, indicated by red, while the other nodes are in state 0, indicated by green. At time t equals 1, A remains in state 1, while B changes to 1, since it is the neighbor of A, which is in state 1. For the first transition, C and D remain in state 0. This is because of the OR function at each node. At time t equals 2, all four nodes are in state 1. Nodes C and D become 1 because they have a neighbor, namely B, which are in state 1. After this, no node will change state. That is, the system has reached a fixed point. The trajectory of the system for this example is also shown on the slide. At any time t, the system's configuration is a vector specifying the states of the nodes. For a deterministic system, the succession, successor of a configuration is unique. In the work done in our group, we considered the specific problem of inferring the local functions given the network and the class from which the local functions of GDS have all been chosen. For this work, inference problem under two modes were considered, namely passive and active. Passive mode, one can only observe the system in carrying out inference. In the active mode, user submit queries to the system. Each query is a configuration of the system and the response is assumed to be the successor configuration. The main goal here is to use as few queries as possible. Our group has been exploring this problem space for some years now and here are some of the representative results from this work. With that, I would like to thank you all for coming to the presentation. Please send me any questions that you have via email that I cannot answer in the upcoming question answer session. And I apologize for again for the back, all the background noise. I will be better prepared next time. Thanks.